Need for Speed Payback versus Need for Speed 2015, the documentary, the third and final part, looking in to what was the more enjoyable game. Yes, fellas, yes, fellettes. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys have had a fantastic weekend. This is the third and final piece of the puzzle, investigating that theory. Now, as you know, we started off on Friday evening, taking a look at the two trailers to understand which of the two gave you the most excitement in the lead up to each game's launch. Then on Saturday, we took a look at the two games in deeper detail, breaking down the mechanics of each game, doing a comparison, and from my opinion at least, the conclusion we derived to was that while Payback is technically the better game, 2015 for various reasons, five that I picked out was the most enjoyable. Now of those five reasons, the first reason that I actually picked out was actually in relation to the way the game felt, the actual aura, the presentation, the feel, the whole street vibe. For me, that was one of the reasons as to why Need for Speed 2015 was a more enjoyable game to play than Need for Speed Payback. The thing is though, that was one of five different reasons I listed and what I didn't realise was just how much that specific reason was an opinion shared by many of you guys. Now you may remember at the end of that video I did state that there was going to be a third episode whereby I was actually going to treat it as a shout out series and read out some of the comments that you guys have actually put in relation to the first two videos. Now, now looking at both videos, all together there was nearly 300 comments that I had to read through, get an understanding of and try to make some sort of sense of. However, I started to notice a reoccurring theme, a reoccurring pattern, a reoccurring type of comment being left. So what we're going to do now is get straight into these shout outs, starting off with GT Apex who says, I enjoyed Need for Speed 2015 way more, so much more atmospheric. Payback just feels like a rush DLC for 2015. Next, we've got Anthony Roberto. Quite a long comment he's left here, but I'm just going to pick out the most important parts relative to the point that I'm trying to make. I found that as a car enthusiast, Need for Speed 2015 really pulled me in with Ken Block, etc. and the whole midnight street racing feel. Next up, we've got Drishav Gopichand. Apologies if I've got your name wrong, fella. He says Need for Speed 2015 has that underground vibe and outlaw style game. We then have Jaska V, or is that a five? I'm not sure. But anyway, he says, I think I like 2015 more, but I shouldn't, right? The handling is worse. It has less cars, but it's but I still like it more. Maybe it's the map and the dark feel of the game that I like. Right, next up we've got Anthony Forbes. Now his comment again is quite a long one, but towards the middle of it, he says, I really felt like what you were doing in that game was illegal, and that was the point of underground that this is something you shouldn't be doing in the day. Next up, we've got I'm Yu Jin, who says, I had fun with 2015, though a bit lacking, it suits the underground racing theme. Right, next up, we've got David M, who says, the payback one isn't as good as the past ones. He's refer uh, referring to the trailers. No emotions watching it, which is what I always loved about Need for Speed trailers. Just felt like watching a trailer of another regular action movie. So again, in relation to the feel, we've got Marshmallow, who says, 2015 was better in my opinion, as it focused on car culture rather than underwhelming story of payback. Also, 2015 had much more focus on realistic action, which in my opinion is better because it's believable. We've got Detro, a regular on the channel. I hate to say it, but as time goes on, I think I enjoyed 2015 more than Payback. Yeah, Payback has some better aspects such as car list and visual customization in terms of body kits, but 2015 had way more better atmosphere, in my opinion. It's no underground free, mind you, but I feel as if it did a better job at the illegal street, uh, street racing vibe than Payback. We've got Troll R34. Please don't troll me, sir who says, and this is again in reference to the trailers, to be honest, the Need for Speed Payback trailer was pretty cool, but the 2015's trailer gave you that feeling of I'm an illegal street racer and an adrenaline rush. Next up, we've got Kobe Mangala. I like Need for Speed 2015 better with my emotions as well. The tone set for 2015 just had a more up feeling and just the colors complemented better than Payback, especially with the photo editor. So you've got a creator there. Alexis Mendoza. 
Need for Speed 2015, graphics, upgrade system, characters and theme were better, but handling was complete garbage. Payback, pretty much everything wrong with 2015 was fixed except graphics and upgrade system became kind of bad. Also, story was very cheesy compared to 2015. So again, essentially what he's saying here is what we've been saying throughout this whole video so far, that again, it boils down to the theme, it boils down to the atmosphere and the actual overall uh, feel of the game and what it gives off to you when playing it. Right, this one's quite a long one. I'm actually gonna read it all the way through. It's Flare Rage Vortex. Okay, 2015 trailer was very cool and got my heart racing and the cool and grungy feeling that I got from it and having all those crazy stunts that happened within it. Plus, the added bonus of five iconic people in the game as bosses was a big boost in hype. But the payback trailer didn't feel like it was advertising for a video game. It felt like an action movie directed by Michael Bay. Funnily enough, I think it was Michael Bay who actually um, done the trailer for Need for Speed Payback. I'm, I don't know, he didn't. I, I'm wrong. I think it was the run he done it for. Anyway, um, many, many explosions. Well, yes, explosions are cool, but it doesn't seem to settle right with me. I don't know if it's from me immediately thinking of the Transformers movie when I saw it. You know what? I'm getting sidetracked here. In short, 2015 equals game about street racing. Payback equals movie with explosions. Back to you, boy. No, back to you, sir. But thank you for that. Appreciate that. Uh, next up, we've got Streaker. Is it Streaker? S-T-3-R-K-A. Is that your license, uh, your license plate, sir? It's true that I had more fun in 2015. Despite the physics and the glitchy stuff, it has a bigger street racing vibe to me, unlike in Payback. We've got Mikhail Abdullah, who says, I like Need for Speed 2015 trailers more because it brought a different feeling than Payback. Right, now, what you just saw there was a very small selection of an extremely large amount of comments that were all echoing that very same sentiment. When I was going through those comments, I didn't have it in mind that I was gonna make this video all centralized around this pool, but because there were so many of them that were pretty much the same, I thought that it was just important to highlight and underline this and bring more light on it. It seems to me that the biggest problem with payback, despite everything that we spoke about in the last video, despite the fact that there's no online free roam multiplayer at the moment, despite the fact that there are no cops, is that it has lost the overall feel for what people want a Need for Speed game to be about. Now again, there are gonna be those of you who disagree with this and that is absolutely fine. I don't put these things out here for you guys to all sit and just nod your head and agree. Obviously, when you do agree, then it makes me feel that what I'm saying is making sense at least, which is great, but it's open to opinion, it's open to debate, it's open to discussion but from what i'm seeing from what you guys are putting out it seems that this could be the overriding problem with need for speed payback and i guess what this also does is it gives a bigger reason and adds more weight to the whole hashtag need for speed tokyo nights um movement that's been going on something that i tried to help out with in a very very small way by uploading my map idea but nevertheless if you've got a need for speed game set in tokyo in the streets of Tokyo, there is no way it's gonna be light-hearted. There is no way that it's gonna be all smiles. Not that not that payback was light-hearted and all smiley, but clearly it lost the feel, it lost the, the atmosphere of being on the streets. You've only got to read a few books and watch a few movies to understand that there's real gang, 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 gangs. Real gang bangers out there in, in Japan. You understand what I'm saying? And I feel taking Need for Speed to Japan focusing on the cars, making the cars the central focus of the game, proper upgrades, proper engine swaps, and car meets, proper car meets, as well as a whole load of other illegal based shenanigans involving the cops and whatnot. I think these are the things that are needed, and these are the things that should be used as the core emphasis, the core platform when building a Need for Speed game moving forward. Whether or not you go to school, whether or not you go to college, or whether or not you're in full-time work, or whether or not you're part of a sports team, Every single one of those establishments have got core values upon which they go by. When you first join one of those establishments, you are told what the core values of that establishment is, and that is the ethos as to what they work by. And I think the points that I just laid out there in relation to how Tokyo Nights could be set in terms of its vibe, in terms of stylistically, etc., those should be the core values moving forward for a Need for Speed game. It doesn't have to be set in Tokyo, it could be set in Mexico, it could be set anywhere in the world, but primarily, we need that grit. That's pretty much it, guys. So, we've come to the end of the weekend. We've come to the end of this three-part documentary series. I wanna say a huge, huge thank you to every single person who commented, 
every single person who hit the like button, every single person who debated, every single person who disagreed and agreed. As I said, I like putting out these videos that gets the community talking, that even if it does ruffle some feathers from time to time, I feel it's all for the great of common good. Also wanna say a shout out to a new friend of mine called Big Smoke. What's going on, homeboy? <laughs> nah, it's nothing but love to the brother. He put a comment out that I um, unfortunately misunderstood, took it the wrong way, and I may have come at him in a little bit of a heated, born way, so I'll apologize to you, brother. It's all love. I see you just on your troll, 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 gang, 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 but no, we're good. Respect to you. Respect to you, fam. Anyway, if it's your first time around here, I wish you a born welcome. As always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, swing the damn hell out of the notification bell so you know when the next video drops. Um, I'm going to be coming back with some more Driver San Francisco during the week, and uh, I'll see you when the next video comes out. Take it easy. Peace.